Welcome back, everybody, to a special episode here on the O'Shea Duke Jackson main channel. Uh, I am your host, O'Shea Duke Jackson. For those of you that were waiting in the uh, live stream, I do thank you for coming. Uh, today, I have a really, really special guest on the show with us today for the new year. This is my first actual individual interview. And for those of you who uh, have ever researched anything about Colombian content on YouTube, Many of you are going to know who, who this, uh, this this nice looking lady is. Her name is Columbia with Anita. She offers tour packages um, as well as Colombian uh, content and how to stay safe in your traveling. She's currently living in the United States, uh, but she is definitely going to give us some pointers and some tips here. I've been subscribed to her channel for at least two or three years, and uh, we finally got together to do a show. So I'm glad that she's able to come in and join us. and. Today, we're dealing with Columbia with Anita. How are you doing today? How are you, Shay? Thank you for inviting me and for this opportunity. Thank you so much. All right. Everything is good. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, Columbia, uh, Anita. What was the reason that you started making YouTube, um, YouTube videos? What brought you to YouTube? Oh, well, um, at that time, I was starting university. So one of the requirements to get graduate, it was to know English. And in order for me to practice, I started to make these YouTube videos to know if people knew, knew me or understand whatever I was trying to say. And then uh, gladly people started to like, it. and then I said, okay, I will talk about topics that people will or may feel interested about Colombia so that they know us a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So then when I made the, the first videos, it became uh, more popular. And they were actually people asking me if they can travel to Colombia and, or, if, or that they were already in Colombia and wanted someone to help them to move around. So <clears throat> uh, then I just started to help these people, but then my pocket was suffering a lot. Because... <laughs> Because, because like, if, if someone is in your, we have the tradition that if you want to help someone and then you want to move them around, then you pay. So for me, I felt bad, like this person is busy, they needs help, and then I'm going to make that person pay. So I just started to pay. But then I was like, oh, my God, my pocket is suffering. Like, I should make it a business instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the website came, and then I started to offer the tour. So I was still helping people, but. I wasn't suffering. <laughs> I <was> in <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. That's how it started. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm definitely glad that you started getting uh your pockets started increasing. Um and she has, by the way, guys, 7,400 subscribers. Not very many videos. I would think that if she had more videos, she would have much more subscribers than she does now. She only has about 60 videos, about 7,400 subscribers. But let me let me ask you this, um, Anita. You started making the videos about coming to Columbia, and, and you noticed that you started getting a lot of um, subscribers that were that were black men. Um, yes. Let, let's talk about that. W were you shocked initially? Uh, yes, I was kind of shocked. Because first I noticed that most of my viewers, 96% were men. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the 4% were women. So I said, okay, if most of my viewers are male, then I will start talking about things that male would like to listen. Like how to conquer us or whatever. And then I started to see like most of viewers were from Canada, from USA, from Germany. And then I say, okay. Then I started to talk and then uh, to uh, to talk like with some of my viewers and they were all telling me that they were black. So I was like, oh, you are black. And then then also I also like black men from since always, since always. I don't know why, but I have like a, a strong physical attraction for black men. It's my weakness. OK, I don't know. Uh, Anyways, if I see a man that is Arab, white, whatever, and I find him uh, um, handsome, I, I will feel attracted. 
but in that time it was like just that so I felt very good so I started to make more friends and talk and even posting information with my black friends Mm -hmm. to to give them a view of how is it to be like Afro-Colombian or how in Colombia the black people are perceived so little by little they started to fall in love of our country and once they were here and in, in Colombia and they were discovering that they liked them got more visits and visits and I'll, and even some of my clients end up moving to Colombia and they have their own channels as well so it was something positive okay let me let me ask you this because you're also you're married to an African-American right now I was now I'm divorced oh divorce okay but you, you were married <laughs> yeah. to an African-American okay yeah yeah I, I was married uh, we had like almost two years like visiting each other back and forward in USA okay after we met um, and then then we married and then I got pregnant <laughs> but then we didn't get alone okay so uh, he he chose to divorce and it was a bad divorce now everything is better okay uh, so um yeah so that's what happened but i still like in general I, my sweet and weakest spot is for black people okay because they besides just, just that bad experience wasn't enough for me to say nothing uh, for me uh, i found that my best friends are black are white are any color but uh, Black friend has always supported me a lot as a person. So I, I have a weak spot. See? Let me, let me ask you this. When it comes to um, black people in Colombia, how, how are black people in Colombia viewed to, you know, I know like in Medellin, there's not a lot of blacks there, but how do people in Colombia, how are they viewed by the main society? Well, the, the discrimination, you know, the black people get discriminated anywhere in the world. Uh, but this, as I say in one of my interviews with what, one of my best friends, Soraida, she's black and she explained us that the discrimination in Colombia is different than in other places. It's still. In Colombia, there is a high acceptance of our black uh, population, mm-hmm. and uh, we we have more. There is more. Um, how you say more um, tolerance, even with terms. For example, uh, if I have a ba- black friend in Spanish, I will say, "Hey, negro, hey, negra, ven para acá." Like come here or oh, negrita, like that will. If you are black, that will be your your nickname, right? Okay. Uh, which maybe in USA it wouldn't be tolerated, mm-hmm. but in Colombia it is, and no one see it like something offensive. So in uh, and also black people in Colombia, they are also very open, very open for friendships. Still, they always prefer to get a couple that is black as well because it's easier. Uh, it, they understand each other more, but there is no there is no a, a distinction mm-hmm. that you may find in here that if whatever you say, maybe you or the other person will get offended. And there is a, a pride uh, among black people in Colombia of their of their ancestors so they and they like to include the other people like even even in usa it's something and simple that a woman ties their hair as a black lady could be an issue mm-hmm. uh, there is a term of appropriation of culture uh, when in colombia if you are hispanic uh, you are white even if you tie your hair as a black lady, no one will tell you nothing. 
Okay. And I feel, and I feel that the black ladies in Colombia, as well, they accept themselves more. For example, it's strange to find a woman that use a wig. They like to use their own hair or they made the, uh, how you say that? The, like, you know, the tie, I don't, I forgot the name in English. Mm -hmm. So it's like they, they feel more proud of this descendancy mm -hmm. and they even try to even connect more, trying to remember the African history, how they came from. Like it's, it's very dif different uh, from, from other cultures. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you this, because you, you make some interesting points. Um, why do you feel that the black men, because you, you've been living in America for some time. Uh -huh. What is so much different about Colombian women than American women? What's the difference? Mm. The difference is, is the tolerance, I think. is the tolerance. Like, I feel that rela uh, relationships in America are very... Uh, conservative in comparison. So the woman and the men are checking all the time where the other person is, what they are doing, and it's very plain. But you have a relationship in Colombia, and you are not controlling what time your husband or your wife comes home. If they want to go to a party with friends, it's not an issue. But in here it's so different, it's so conservative. And the woman as well in Colombia, eh, they have more time. Uh, mm -hmm. They have more time to uh, take care of their couple. Like they are very focused on that. Like to have their home very nice, to take care for your kids, of your men. Like uh, they are very sensitive about to care, to care for their own bodies. And I see, and I have the experience like in USA, Mm -hmm. women have to work a lot so they don't have time to take care of themselves they don't have time to relax with the other person it's, it's a uh, I just I just think it's because of the lifestyle mm -hmm. uh -huh. because some, some people say that oh no Americans are lazy or whatever they are not like I have <laughs> been how hard they have to work to have an income for their household. Like, so you are working all day, you get pregnant and then no one pays you uh, while you are ending your pregnancy or recovering from your pregnancy. So you have to say more money. So it's so stressing. So no, no, no wonder why they don't have time to cook. So they have to eat outside and same is for the men. So, yeah, and everyone is more independent here. And and in Colombia, everyone is very attached to their family. So women have time. Like if, I, if I'm a woman who works, then I go to work. When I come back, I know that my mother or someone will be helping me out to care, care for my kid. And I don't have to spend money in a daycare. Mm -hmm. Like even I could live with my family and we all can uh, help each other. Like it's like that. But in USA... It's like, or you make it, or you make it. So there is no option. So you cannot relax. You cannot take care of yourself. You, you. So that's 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 the vibe that uh, a male or even a woman, when they go to Colombia, it, everything is more relaxed. Everything is more relaxed. Mm -hmm. So that that's why we have like Colombian women living in Colombia. They have more time to care for their couples. Because I, I I also heard this complaint like oh no eh, eh, I want a Colombian that but that lives in Colombia, or because the Colombians that have time living here they became like American, and then like and like it's not like they became like American is that Americans have to work a lot. <laughs> let me let me do this and I'll show off some of the super chats. Let's talk about um. You know the the tours that 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 you do, um, because a lot of people go to. Um, what's the biggest city that most people, when you have a tour package with them, 
what city do they go to? What city is the most visited city? Mm, I will say Medellin. Medellin is uh, one of the tops. And then I will say Cartagena. Okay. Um, Bogota, uh, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. And Zona Cafetera, which is like the area of Armenia, Calarca, where you can see all the process of the coffee. So those are, are like, and, and Cali, of course, Cali. Okay. <laughs> look, look, but my main center is Medellin. Medellin. Like I, I know from top to down to Medellin. I know Medellin naked and dressed. <laughs> uh, okay, let's 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 start there. Um, why? Because Medellin, I, I I've never been there, but I know that Cartagena has a beach, and Medellin does not. I know Bogota is the largest city. Why do so many people like going to Medellin so much? What's what is what what is so special about Medellin? Well, not because it's just uh, Medellin is the most innovative city in the world. So. It's a city uh, where we have changed from the extreme violence uh, through the most educated city. Mm -hmm. So when when you talk to a Colombian, um, particularly someone from Medellin, wherever they are from the city or the countryside, poor or rich, the, their level of intelligence is very high. Plus, they meet it with a high level of education and kindness. If you go to Medellin and you get lost and you need uh, uh, directions and you still don't know Spanish, you ask someone, someone will try to get you Google Translator. And if they are busy, they will take the time out of nothing to help you out. And if they cannot take you to the place that you need to go, they will ask someone to take you there. Like they will do everything to help you. So that's why people feel enchanted uh, with Medellin. Because it's the mix of treatment with good luck. Also, the city is very clean. Uh, the paisas, which is how the people of Medellin are called, uh, they have a, a, a huge pride and sense of uh, appropriation of the territory. So everything is clean. Uh, in general, it's nice. And you can find any kind of activities in Medellin. Every day there is something, free concerts, uh, free yoga classes, mm -hmm. free like uh, uh, Medellin also, besides putting the best structures in the poorest area, they, they use that to make it touristic. And also they entertain a lot the population. So entertainment is cheap, education high, and people nice, nice people. So that's why. Let me let me ask you this. If if uh, shout out to Dwayne Brown, I'll read you guys super chats out in a minute. Do me a favor to subscribe to Columbia with Anita. Like I said, I'm a big fan of her channel. Go into the description. Um, I would like to get her at like 50 or 100 subscribers uh, before we end. She's a really, really great channel. A lot of good information for those of you who are interested in going to Columbia. Um, and do me a favor and get the likes up. So what I'll do, I'll put her channel in the description. Like I said, she was nice enough to uh, to come on um the, the 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 stream today she just got off work and she's nice enough to do that so if you guys can do me a favor i would really appreciate and if you uh subscribe because we have almost 200 people watching right now if you yeah, were to so, go ahead i'm sorry no i'm sorry and the people who is watching sometimes in my live videos i make ruffles so it's better is also you can subscribe to my website colombia with and um you can check all the content that I have over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me, let me do this real quick and we'll find out who is watching right now. So do me a favor. I'm going to read the super chats out. Comment your city and state. Cause we have 191 people watching. Thank you for uh, subscribing trap star bingo. If you guys tell me where you're caught, where you're watching from right now, I'll tell Anita. So that way she will know cause she's not looking at the chat right now. So guys, do me a favor. Tell me where you're uh, where you're watching from in the world, and I'll shout you out, and I'll let her know. Okay, we have Cortez Tucker in Nashville, Tennessee. Junk Pile Video in Portland. William Wharton in Atlanta. Thank you for watching. Excalibur in Tallahassee, Florida. Leroy Honeycutt in St. Louis, Missouri. 
All right. We got Dr. Ford in Arkansas, Farhid Mahoub in Atlanta, Georgia, Darkseid and Colleen, AM1 in Oakland, Dwayne Brown in Orlando, Reese Digital in Chicago. See a lot of fans. Bojack in Cambridge, Sean Anderson in Dayton, King Nick in Sydney, Australia, Dan F. and Dizzle. Thank you in Dallas, Texas. AP 530 Sacktown. Thank you. Chris Knight, Southampton, UK. Odinga, Maryland. This is Ace Live. He has a good channel. He's a big fan of yours too. Miami, Florida. Okay. Oh, so a lot of people watching from all over the world. Well, thank you. I want to greet to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. If you subscribe and thanks to you, O'Shea. You are oh. so, so kind. Gracias. No, no problem. Gracias, mi amor. And make Indo sure that you, you guys just keep subscribing to her. Hit the bell on there. Thank you, Baba Tunde Swana in Manchester. Let me ask you something, because we were talking a little bit before. Mm -hmm. um, I talk about dating Latin women or Colombian women. And you, you brought up a good point. You, you mm -hmm. said that um, a lot of times, like, Col uh, Latin women, their personality is a little bit more touchy-feely. Mm -hmm. So a lot of American guys can take that as a woman is flirting when it's not the case. Can you talk about that? Oh, yes. Like, uh, that actually happened to us a lot. Yeah, like, for example, um, even it happened to me. That's why I also have to get translators because I tend to hug the other person. So once I hug them, Someone will want to kiss me, and then I no, no, like I'm just being kind, like no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so then they they feel embarrassed, and then uh, everything move on, right? Uh, so this, uh, but luckily, uh, a lot of uh, people know the difference when you are actually interested or just flirting, or we also know. Uh, for example, if someone like us, we are, we will allow that the other person flirt with us. Like, for example, in my neighborhood, there was a guy, uh, he wasn't homeless, but uh, he was almost like homeless. He used to sell in the street perros and everything, and then he didn't have his teeth, right? He was, he had a very look fun funny look at him right, right. and i used to talk to him oh, so so cute and then he was he was so in love but but then i let him like you know everyone needs care it's like a line that everyone knows when you are flirting and when you are not but still you can be touchy so this this person really appreciate and then i then i bring my friends and everyone hug him and so he feel loved and for us uh, to be touchy and flirty is a way to connect to another person. And yeah, it's a way to show love regardless. So uh, when someone gets it confused, what what we are trying to say or, or do, we, we just make it clear. So to avoid arguments. <laughs> uh-huh. So let me, let me ask you this, because I noticed the same thing. And shout out to Dr. JJ Redwood. Uh, that's my doctor right there. Um, ah. I, I want to say something because I noticed this when I was in Brazil. I know Brazil and, you know, Colombia, they're close, but they're not the same country. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the women in Brazil, very, very nice. And the women, they, you know, kiss you on the side of the cheek, kiss you on that side of the cheek. Mm -hmm. And to American men, American women are mean as shit. I mean, I know you probably noticed that. Americans no, are mean I, motherfuckers. I cannot, I cannot criticize uh, my fellas because I understand both point of view, but it's okay. So, like, an American woman will not, for the most part, American woman is not going to come up and kiss you on the cheek unless she really likes you. Latin women, it's... We as American men, we take it as if, oh, you're interested if you do that. So... How for a first time person coming to Colombia, how will they know? Because I've noticed even that living in Europe, that just because a woman is very nice, that doesn't mean that she likes you. And in America, that typically is the case. How do you know if a Colombian woman is interested in is really wants you to date her? Just just do the normal thing, like try to hold her hand. 
what does she do when you try to hold your, her hand? Try to kiss her close to her lips. What does she do? Does she move away or does she like it? Mm -hmm. so, so you have to test the waters. That's how <laughs> you know. <laughs> that that's how is panic people in general do you have to test the water and it's the man who has to do that yeah. unless you are like me and if i find a man that is very conservative and he's not making the move then i will make the move but but you have to test the waters i will say that yeah let's talk about the the testing the water things as far as the the culture um Latin women and Colombian women, you said they want you know the man to to. Um, let me ask this first: What about a, a, a city like Medellin? If a guy is bad at Spanish, and you know a lot of people are not really strong in Spanish. It, is that a bad city to go to, or should he go to Bogota, which I heard has more English speakers? H yeah, how do you get around not speaking Spanish? Bogota has more English speakers, but to be honest, I think that Bogota people are assholes. They are <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Most population is white, but it's not because they are white, it's because they, they are so rude. Like, even they are rude with the paisas. No, no, no. I don't like Bogota people. So um, I will say that for a person to get around, like even Medellin, people talk more in Spanish, but they'll do anything to help you. As I say, just Google Translator or whatever, you will find someone to help you. Okay, okay. Yeah, now, yeah. let's talk about, um, I've also heard that in Colombia, a lot of Americans, they, like in America, People don't really dress nice all the time. Uh huh. Uh, but in Colombia, dressing nice is very, very important. Let's see. Let's talk about that because a lot of American guys, we just don't really care. Just kind of, you know, America is like you just throw on anything and go outside. Just, How should you come dress? Come to Colombia. Let's talk about that. Yeah, just just depend on on the area too. But for example. We don't like to be out in flip flops, like in Medellin, flip flops, no. To, for the street, no, it's a big no, no. Mm -hmm. no it's, it, it makes you look like you don't care about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, say, that, say that one more time. What, that it makes, it makes us think that you don't care about yourself if you wear flip flops to go outside? Mm -hmm. No. And then uh, shorts either, like we usually use jeans or mm -hmm. um, or or pants. And then uh, could be a, a shirt, like you have a nice shirt, could be that is normal among us. And woman or like we, we take like 1000 showers during the day. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, also to smell good is a must and even if you go in the and, and then you get in the metro at 7 a.m in the morning everyone is smelling good and if you are smelling bad they don't even get you in, let you get in into the metro <laughs> no it, it's truth it's truth because before before i used to take the the bus here and there were people that were rooting alive. They don't even knew that they were already dead, but the smell was so awful. Wait a minute, they were rotting alive? Yeah, like they don't <laughs> take shower. And then I'm like, man, listen, and then I don't even think about the one who lived their hand to no 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 no. And then they they allow them to go in the bus because they 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 put that it may be discrimination if you don't let them. But it's also a, a, a matter of sanity. Like mm -hmm. you, you have to demand that the people at least uh, take care of your own basics. Like you, you cannot let yourself go that way. So for us, for and like and for it, and the looks in Colombia, color, superficial of everything, but the looks in Colombia is very important even to get a job. 
like if you are overweight, most likely it's more difficult to get a job. So if you're fat. Or, yeah, if you're fat. Uh, so for example, if in the metro, in the metro station, the workers of the metro, you will never find one fat because it's the, they even measure the, the percentage of fat for you to work there. Also, you need to be certain height. Uh, so they, they, they say that it's important to take care of the image. And you, if you are a student, then you, you, uh, they also ask that your uh, qualifications be high. Like you, you, they are aiming always for perfection. So even if you go to Medellin, it's difficult to find someone overweight, except for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyways, if you are aware overweight, they will not judge you as a person. They will still love you as anyone else. Just that they are very demanding on themselves. Mm hmm Okay, let me let me do this. Um, I want to. So it seems like you've got about so far. Okay, about thirty-four new subscribers. I've checked. Thank you guys for gracias subscribing to our channel. Make sure you hit the bell. Shout out to Doug. Let me just read off some of the people who have super chatted. And if you guys want to ask questions, you can do that. And uh, make sure that um, you you check out our channel. Really, really good information. We'll talk about some of the cost of living things budgets right now what you should do when you come to columbia and one of the people i've interviewed on my channel before is a big fan of yours his name is this is ace live so make sure you check him out after the show because of course he spends a lot of time in medellin so let me do this yardley moy shout out to him going to bogota on january 21st mlk 31st birthday shout out to yardley and you do tours do you do tours in bogota also no, no. I, my main center is just Medellin and the okay. countryside. Uh huh. Okay. But okay. no, 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 no. Bogota, no. <laughs> Bogota, no. Okay. Dan F. and Dizzle, Dallas, Texas. Thank you, brother. AM1, excellent stream, Moshe. This has a lot of women shaking in their boots. Ha, shout out to my brother out in Oakland. Dwayne Brown, great content. Going to Bogota the last week of this month. Damn it. Okay, we got to get Bogota in your package. That's two people. <laughs> yes, we got two. Who's going to Medellin? Let me know who's going to Medellin. Came in late. What value does she offer? Mikey R. She's, we're talking about it right now, okay? Mr. Ibmore, typical woman after you marry her. Uh, okay, we'll um, not read that. Hurricane Silos, and wake the hell up. They are in my top five. They on point. Thank you so much, brother. Um, let's talk about, you know, um, okay, I I've heard about this also. But let me get back on the, the thing. So coming to Columbia, um, what are some of the what are some of the things that you need as an American that you feel like is important? If you're coming to Medellin in the first time, what would you tell people that that they need to um, some of the stuff they should bring, some of the things they should look out for, things like that? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, when you first come to Medellin. Come mm -hmm. with a or, or Colombia come with an open mind. Uh, people come thinking that people will like you, so you you be sure that people will accept you as a person and they will like you. Um, when the do's and don'ts, uh, for example, um, I will say that for security. Don't try to show up the money, like expensive things, rollets or whatever. Don't try to show it. The, the Colombian people who really has a lot of money never show it off. Mm -hmm. And it's for your own security. Um, as well, I will say that a lot of things in Colombia are paid in cash. So mm -hmm. it's important that as soon as you reach, try to get some Colombian pesos and cash and get familiar with them. Uh, save your money, save your card, and also save in a secret pocket or something, mm -hmm. uh, the cash. Because there are even stores that you need to buy stuff, and they don't even have the system for the card. Also, for an emergency, it's better to have the cash. You never know. Um, 
as well when ab about not showing the money that is a, a that is an important thing to do uh, when you come to Colombia don't start openly talking about narco cocaina Pablo Escobar because people could feel offended mm. uh, uh -huh. so always talk about it uh, don't make, what I will say basically is like don't make jokes about it because someone family uh, got killed in those times by the narco uh, by the narco traffic system or so it's a very delicate matter it's a very delicate matter so just talk to it from the point of view that you get you want to get educated about it and try to talk to it with people that you actually trust um, as well th now that you say about it uh, as well like people who wants to come to Medellin that they don't know which areas to visit mm -hmm. I'll publish I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link later on uh, with the with a map of the places that you should and you should not visit um it's also good that uh, when you come to Colombia don't feel scared to approach people to make a friendship or something mm -hmm. uh, for example if you like someone that you don't know just ask the, people in Colombia is very approachable so uh what I do say is like you see someone you like then go and say like hey, can I take a picture with you they most likely will say yes and then after that, they say, can we exchange numbers to send you the picture? They most likely will say yes. And then you, there you have an open a space to make a new friendship. Oh, that um, was some game right there. Take a picture yeah. and then say, can I have your phone number to send you the yes. okay? Yes. I like yes. that. I like that. Yes. <laughs> and also check what events are in the city. So all the time they are making free concerts. They are making like between the week, there are free open gymnasts in the city. So it's easy to go to, uh, to this open gymnast to get Zumba dances and everything is for free. And, and there you can make more friends. Or you can see someone running and then you say, can I run with you? Then you run. Or you go to the weight areas and then you make more people that wants to help you out to, to train. So it's very easy to get friends like don't get close in the hotel room or in the place that you visit like just go out and jump in the water okay okay let me let me do this i want to give a, a few shout outs here get the likes up on the video shout out to brother Dwayne brown vegas mctow thank you so much and the brother uh i believe that is oh my god thomas he's the one dude that has a uh, your phone um Oh, King John Lee. Thank you, brother, for the fire super chat. Guys, get the likes up. And uh Sorry, yeah, no I'm problem. here. Let me let me let me let me do this real quick. I want to talk about the currency. Because, you know, in America, we use uh the dollar, the US dollar. Um and when you go to Colombia, it's the peso. Mm -hmm. But um, I know like, you know, 3,100 pesos is close to like $1. But you call, instead of saying 50,000 pesos, you say 50 mil, right? 50 mil, uh-huh, 50 Talk mil. Talk about that because a lot, of, a lot of people will get confused on like, because we think like 50 mil, that's like a lot of money. So talk about the, um, that, how to count money like and when you get the notes and stuff like that. Um, in, yeah. in Colombia. I, I will just say that if you want to know about money, just one dollar can multiply for three thousand. Mm -hmm. And that's basically so if you have fifty fifty thousand, if you have fifty dollar, multiply that for three thousand. Okay. So it's it's like uh ochenta mil pesos, no? Okay. So um that's that's the easy conversion that uh, to make but uh for example if you want to have a reference of what things cost then for example uh, that's the good thing about medellin you could be eating in the high in the most high class area 
uh, with amazing food and this food will cost between five and fifteen dollars the dish mm -hmm. uh, or if you take a taxi from the opposite area of the city they will just cost 15 uh, they will just cost around ten dollars the mats okay uh-huh so once you are in colombia the the things are not too expensive so let me let me ask you also this um i, I know about one neighborhood in um in medellin el poblado uh a lot of americans uh a lot of Americans live there. What what place would you recommend? Like, let's say, for example, I'm I'm you know I'm booking a tour. Where should I stay, or do could I get that from you, or you do you just do the tours, and do you do also the you know the hotel and booking also? Mm, I just usually do the tour, okay. But just for very special cases, then I help out to do the booking and other things. Uh, for example, uh, besides the tours, right now I'm helping an Indian businessman. So uh, he asked me that he wants to put a business in Colombia. Okay. So what I do is a full research for him. So he paid me upfront, okay. and then um, then after that he he wants to be in Colombia and then for this week he wants a translator so uh, I also make a special deals depending on what the client wants to do uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. but I always like uh, I always before that then I agree in the payment and then after the payment is done then I go ahead and do what I need to do for that person uh-huh Okay, so you can also arrange, like, if a person needs to have a translator for the day, you can also do that, too. Yes, of course. They tra Actually, for the tour, I, I take a translator. Like, I have a set up tours, like, going through Medellin. We visit the uh, Poblado, then the downtown area, Museo of Antioquia, Plaza Botero, Planetarium, Botanical Garden. And it's a tour that takes around four to six hours. Um where you can t uh, know a little bit about the history of Colombia, the current situation, and it's in a, in a private car, so you will be in a car with a translator, sometimes with two, depending if I'm training someone else or not, mm -hmm. uh, because the translators that I have, they are also my cousins, and they were also my classmates. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the so we we try to keep it like that in order to keep everyone safe, you know. And the tour is is um is in the is individual or I also have for groups. So uh, just check it out in Colombia with Anira.com. I have it over there. I also have the beer tour where you can just go and spend a night learning about the process of beer. And then on top of the of the beer processing, you can uh, go ahead and dance. So we have nights of uh, salsa, nights of rock and roll. So yeah, or, or if you want to go to the countryside, we also have a tour for the Piedra del Peñol or Guatapé, yeah. which is a big, es, es, uh, big stone that you can uh, climb and Next to it, there is an old town that is now a dam, and in this dam, uh, they have um, how like little islands where you can stay and you can practice water sports. Um, you can go in a boat and have a romantic dinner if you want in this boat. Like it's very nice. Let me let me talk about. And we're going to talk about those tours that you have there. Let's talk about the the salsa because obviously you have the beer tour. And on the beer tour, you could you could dance. I heard that mm -hmm. you know, like in Latin countries, salsa is very important. If you go out with the Latin woman, you need to go out and try it. What about some of these guys? Like I have a friend named George Macon. He cannot dance. Um, it's like he walking with two left shoes. You know, like his knees is broke. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 he, yeah. He can't dance at all, man. He, had, you know, mm -hmm. he. So what if they can't dance, but, you know, the Colombian women, they want to, 
do the salsa. T let's talk about, have you ever had a question about the salsa dancing and stuff like that? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, we don't mind if the other person don't like to, uh, don't know how to dance salsa or have difficulties to dance salsa. What we mind is that you are willing to dance salsa. Uh-huh. <laughs> So what we do is like if we find that a friend or someone don't know salsa and then we want to dance, the man has to invite the woman to dance. So what we do is that we get that person drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we invite that person to dance because we, we don't mind. We don't mind if you don't know. Like we even like to teach uh, how to dance it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Uh, we just like to that the other person has an open spirit to learn. Right. That's it. So um, I used to go in Medellin to a club that is called El Tibiri. It's like the ugliest basement that you will find. Ugliest basement. Like, mm -hmm. but the intensity of this place is so high. Like, you come out a sweating. You, everyone is sweat it sticks to the ceiling and it start dripping. It's disgusting, but no one cares because the environment is so good. And then there are a lot of foreigners who go there, okay. whatever it is, to dance salsa or to, um, or to just watch people dancing. Uh, still, for this, if you're gonna go and dance salsa or anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, even if you have a couple and you go with your couple, you have to be willing to share your couple for dance. Mm -hmm. Like we don't stick to just one couple to dance. If it's dancing, it's just dancing. Ah, so you have to, you move in different couples. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for us, it's normal. So don't feel offended if you are going with your couple and then someone else invite them. Maybe your couple will look at you like, can I dance? <laughs> but you have to say yes. Because, <laughs> because in, in, in this kind, for example, in the TV, if you say no, most likely you will stay the whole night without dancing. People will see that you reject. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, that's what's happening with the salsa. So, But don't feel shy. Like even guys from Medellin, a lot of them don't even know how to dance salsa. Oh, okay, uh -huh. okay. So you guys heard that uh, your brother's got to get ready to to try to dance salsa when you get over there. Now, make sure you you yeah. know you learn some moves. Um, let me let me ask you this. You know, what do you have? Do you think that people, if they're gonna come to Medellin, um, should they start learning? Uh, oh, Odinga, what's your question again? I asked you right now. Um, should they start learning? Spanish a little bit before they come. Do you get that question a lot? Yes. Well, that act that is a a big help. So I will say yes. Always try to uh, to learn the language you can. If you cannot, it's still okay. But it will make you it will make your visit more easier or more easy. Sorry. Make it more easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me do that. I won't. I won't keep you too much longer. Um, you got about 15 more minutes. Would that be okay? Yes, yes, no problem. Okay. So do me a favor. 221 people watching right now. I would really appreciate if um, we can get some likes on the video. I really thank you guys for being over here. Um, now, uh, so do me a favor and get the likes. So let me ask this question real quick while I'm getting you brothers to like the video. Odinga wants to know about Choco Colombia. What is Choco Colombia? C H O C O Colombia. Uh, Choco Colombia is a city uh, in Colombia on the Pacific area where most of population is black. This has a lot of Afro descendant uh, or Afro Colombian people. Uh, it's a whole different world and a whole different culture. The city indeed is not beautiful, but the people is amazing. This is the this is the person that a black will feel black and connected to to their origins, Choco. And it's funny because well, Choco the name of Choco comes from a 
from a leader indigenous, but at the same time, I find it kind of funny because choco reminds also to chocolate, to chocolate. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So like like the people in choco, and the also the the culture is different. Like choco people, they like a lot to dance, the music. They have a lot of parties all the time. Uh, people, the the neighbors compete in the neighborhood to have the biggest out listening to music, and they also tend to have uh, uh, the more uh, more uh, delicious foods uh, related to fish and to seafood is more healthy. Yeah, it's a whole culture. Like even they they even have great musicians of, as well. Uh, from Choco comes a group that is called Choc It Down. Uh, it's very nice. Okay, Choco. Choco. All right. Um, now yeah. let me. I will say that. If, go ahead. Uh -huh. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I will say that I don't know. Usually, people, black people, like to visit Cali because there are more blacks. But I will say that. Try to visit Choco. They even have more. It, like you will feel if you are looking to find more people like you in other places, I think that maybe you will feel more connected like that. Yeah. Mm. Choco. Let me let me ask you, um, okay, because a lot of you know black men, if they go to Medellin, Medellin is more I heard like more like white Colombians how do the mm -hmm. white oh, well okay is it more white hit Colombians I know it's not really a lot of blacks in Medellin right there are to be from my point of view there are a lot of blacks in Medellin in Medellin you can't find anything yeah mm -hmm. but I don't know like even a lot of my friends are black in Medellin so oh uh, I would say maybe it's more difficult in Bogota, but in Medellin, I still find easy. Yeah. Okay, L let me let me ask you: um, Do like your clients that are you know black, if they want to you know date in in Medellin, do do uh, Colombian women? Uh, how would you think that they respond to um, the black American men? Well, until now, the response has been positive. Um, so, the, until now, the response has been positive. So they they just feel like it's, it's still like someone from another country, and he knows. Like they they will mainly focus like you are from another country. Uh, you are speaking in English. It's different. I want to try talk to it to talk to him or her too. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's just that that emotion. Um, yeah, but I have find also on the opposite way that uh, some black people in Medellin uh, that visit, they feel that they are being underlooked until the the other person listens that they speak in English so the the per person perception uh, change mm -hmm. so that will be on the on the like I'm, I'm telling you all the cases that I have whatever they are positive or negative okay but in general black people who visit Medellin they like it they love it and they feel accepted and mm -hmm. the perception for women to date with them is very high okay okay. Okay. Let me talk about. Um, I had a really good question, but damn, I forgot uh, what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, shit. Okay, okay. Let me let me try to get it. I'm trying to get it. Okay, because we're talking about uh, okay the the dating thing. But l l let me let me also ask you if, if you know if you're in Colombia. Um, mm -hmm. shit. 
<laughs> I will make a little dent so you remember. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me kind of uh, uh, go, go back with. Um... Okay, hold on. Anybody saying something? Anything? Time out, Matthew two. Okay, let me hold on one second. Let me get you Negroes out here. Got some dummies in the chat room. Get all the dummies out the chat room right now. Shout out to my boy Mulano, the travel boy, man. Shout out to my man right there. I love my brother. Shout man. I gotta to get Mulano. It. Mulano, yeah, he's uh, get the ass out of here, man. Anybody fucking up my show, get him out of here. Just get him out of here. Don't, don't, just, just time him out. All right, all right. We got two hundred twenty-five people watching right now. Let me, let me talk to you about about this, okay? Um, cost of living, okay? Because we should do a whole episode on that, me and you. But you have some clients that live in Medellin now, okay? Mm -hmm. Now. You, you're living in the United States, and if you want to live a good lifestyle like you would, like, say, middle class in the USA, if you were to go to, um, back to Medellin, how much money do you think that an American needs if they were to go there and, let's say, they want to live full time? Yeah, it, well, it depends. Uh... I will tell you some. I will explain some, the basics. So okay. in Colombia, we have a status. This status depends on the area that you live and on your income. We have a seats. One is the lowest and the seats is the highest. Okay. So, for example, if I go and live in the Poblado area of Medellin, that is the highest class. So the taxes, the public services, the internet, everything will be more expensive. But if you live in a lower area, maybe La Floresta, that could be a status four and three and it's still good, mm -hmm. then the services and everything is way less. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a rent in El Poblado could be more than, could be around $800 a month, okay. for example. Uh, but if I, live in La Floresta. La Floresta is a is a middle class area where you can even find a rent for $250 a month. So mm. first is the it depends on the status and the area that you want to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh -huh. say if you want to live in the uh, El Poblado area, uh, you're one person, okay, um, and I, and I want to let's say my income is twenty five hundred dollars per month U.S. dollars. Uh, twenty five hundred, like two five zero zero. Yes. You will be more than OK for that. Like you will have a great life. Great life. With that. Yeah. Um, cinco. <laughs> Oh, it's a lot. Yeah, it's like uh, 75 million pesos. That's yeah. a lot. A lot, right? No, no, no. No, 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 wait. Use your calculator, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I forgot, like, maybe I messed it up because I'm nervous. Uh, but it's a lot of money. Like, you can live very good with that. Okay. So you you can do that um, in in El Poblado. Now let's talk about getting a let's talk about getting a bank account or something like that. And we, we could do a whole other show about that also. But um, uh, for know, a bank account, yes. well, for a bank account, it's more difficult because mm -hmm. um, you need to at least have your passport, right? Mm -hmm. and then for for oh my god, then for this passport. Um, you need to be at least six months living in Colombia or staying in Colombia in order to open a bank account. But I will say, like, I always try things, you know, like knowing this, if I were another person, what I say is like, go to the bank. And when you go and open the bank account, then say that you have more than six months living in here. Because maybe they won't even check your passport uh, of the time that you have that you entry in Colombia, and you can still open your bank account. But also have present that 
This year, the taxes changed in Colombia. So if you earn more than $500 a month, they will ask you to make the taxes for that money. Oh, so that's that. true. If you, if, if, you, if you live there for longer than six months, you have to pay taxes, right? Yeah, or uh, or if you made that money, yes, you have to pay taxes. Yeah, I'm not sure if you if you if you live there, you are still if you have your bank account, but you don't live there. I don't. I'm not sure if you. Oh. I I have to check it out because is this is it is very new. Uh, thankfully, you made me that question. Yeah, I, I've heard about that. Let me let me just ask you this: You've lived in both countries. You're now living in the United States. Mm -hmm. And now, and now, um, you're in, you're in Colombia. You, I mean, you're, you're, you're from Colombia, but you live in the USA. Which yeah. country for you, um, has more opportunity, uh, in your eyes in which country is like a better quality of life? Hmm. No, definitely USA. Yeah. Because you have, you work hard and then from, this world you can easily uh, get things or buy things by yourself like for example this this is not a big apartment right but i have my new furniture i have good tv good kitchen good everything a thing that it will cost me more in colombia because mm -hmm. because even though i was uh, uh, in colombia i was working as an engineer and I had to work. So I was even working with the government for the Secretary of Environment of Envigado. And then on the weekends, I, I made uh, this as a hobby. Uh, and I still didn't make enough to buy me a car. What, what kind of engineer but, What kind of engineer were you? What kind of engineer? Uh, environmental engineer. Oh, okay. So you were, damn, mm -hmm. all right. So you were engineer, okay. Uh -huh. So that, uh, that, it will like I had two jobs and everything. Then I have to hustle on the side, like, and it still wasn't enough. Like you, you don't see the fruit of your work so easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just with patience. Uh, it's still, that doesn't stop. Like there, there are a lot of Colombians that have, <sighs> that are super millionaires. But anyways. Is difficult to see it because no one really shows their money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me shout out to Marty W. Man, late but still on time. I think he was going. I was just messing around with the brother, but thank you um, for the super chat. I won't keep you too much longer. Let me just make sure we get you some more subscribers. Do me a favor, man. Subscribe to. I got about forty of you guys subscribed to Columbia with Anita. She has now. 74 83 subscribers so that's about 40 I, I would like to get her to 75 um 50 so do me a favor for those people who can help right right now subscribe to channel get some good stuff uh, a lot of you already know her click on the link that i have there click on the link hit the subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when she goes live and if you do that right now, give you a shout out. Thank you, MMA fan, for subscribing. My man Marcus Brown already subbed. Marty W, does she organize meetups? I'll ask her that here pretty soon. Um, already done website. I'm checking it out, too. And also, go check her website out for all her booking information, www.columbiawithanita.com. All right. Thank you so much. Who else we have here? Make sure you subscribe, brother. Subscribe, subscribe, and hit the bell. I think it's different. Mr. Mr. Thank you. I'm subscribed. All right. Who else do we got? Alan Franklin. Thank you. Thank you. Juan Duarte sub hit the bell brothers. Don't forget to hit the bell. Let's see what the, how many we got so far. All right. Trying to make sure these guys subscribe over to you. Let me see what we got. 74, 74 99. All right. How many did you have before? Do you remember? Uh, 74 20. 7420. So David Nakoba, thank you. Mikey R already sub star man sub money mech tips subbed. Omega Dread subbed. Thank you. All you guys. Dwayne Brown subbed. Um, I really appreciate that. Uh Jay Allen, thank you, sub. Jeffrey A subbed. I appreciate you, brother. Let's see what we have here. Oh, thank you. They, yeah, thank you nice. for everyone who subscribed to my channel. Also, if you comment in my channel, I will be more than happy to 
uh, interact with you. I also have Instagram, Colombia with Anita, Facebook, Colombia with Anita, website, Colombia with Anita.com. So feel free uh, to contact me. I'm always open. Always open. Uh, Darius Matthews, you know, I was subbing. I'm ready to take a trip. So let me just do this. Shout out to Mar Marty W. Now read out some of the super chats. Let, let's do this. Um, the, um, I mean, I don't know, maybe talk about the prices and stuff like that. Are, are the prices of things that you do, um, is it on your website or do they have to send an email or how does it, how does it go? You can do whatever, like the prices are on the website, but okay. as well, if you want something different and on a special, also on my website, I have a, a page to contact wherever you, you can ask me what you want to do in, in your, in your, uh, in a tour or what you want to do in your visit to Colombia. Mm -hmm. And then I can help out and make it special for that person. Let's talk about the consulting that you do <clears throat> because yes. um, you also do for people wanting to move to there or wanting to do anything in, in, in consulting. You do that. Now let's talk about your consultant packages. Um, I know that some, some people will, will, will opt to do that. Um, what how do you how do you do it do you do it by skype or do you do it by um how do you do it well usually my biggest weapon to use is the whatsapp whatsapp okay. or i can also call internationally like could be any could be anything like i i have all all kind of contacts still uh for the calls and the packages for consulting the prices will vary because it depends on each case Mm -hmm. uh, some people wants to go to Colombia as a tourist, but maybe they have a criminal background. So they have questions oh. if they will be allowed to get in or not. Mm -hmm. uh, other people, they, they want a business uh, visa. So they ask me what they should do. Other people uh, uh, wants to, did I say about the investment visa, wants to invest, other people wants to, uh, live in Colombia, be a resident. Uh, so, yeah, it varies the prices and the complications. So that's why I cannot give like a set price on those cases. Okay, okay. So we um, basically, I do want to thank you know uh, Colombia with the Nita for coming on, guys. So remember her website. If you have questions, you want to do some some business there and um, in the United States. And I really want to um, thank her for for coming on and and discussing with us. You, you'll get about a hundred subscribers. I'm pretty sure that you will from today's um, from today's podcast. And um, yeah, I really think you have a really good channel. You know, I, I think I think only thing that you if you if you were uh, posting some more, I know you're posting a little bit more now, but you you know you have a really really good channel. I think you could really be big on YouTube. A lot of people already know you. What else do you want to tell? You know, your new subscribers and things like that. Oh well, to my new subscribers, the first thank thank them to subscribe to my channel. Second, that you just not earn someone, a YouTuber that you are going to watch. You also earn a friend. So feel free to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I will take the time to answer questions. Sometimes I do it for free. Sometimes I charge. But uh, it's part of what I love to do. And, uh, and yes, and for the other YouTubers, uh, I also, besides you, I'm very thankful to you for helping me out. And mm -hmm do the interview of Shay. And I also have other YouTubers that uh, they started like um, I'm Warma. I met him before everything. And then he blew up. You mean I am Warma? Yeah. Well, before he before he was thinking in doing the channel, we were friends. He watched me. And then I told him, then I told him some little things that we could do. And then we wanted to work together, but then I got married and everything. So I didn't really have time. I was with my own problems. And then uh, now he blew up and we are still good friends. Been uh, on my there is too. another one, Ben Juan. He makes fitness. 
also we are very good friends uh like I, I like to to keep and sometimes I even I I get to meet some of my subscribers and they are my friends too. So to my new subscribers feel free like you just not earn uh someone that you will watch it, so you will earn a friend too. So Yeah, Mara, he's been on my channel at least three or four times. Uh-huh. Oh, you know him, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. He's in Kenya. Kenya. He's in Kenya right now. As I was, um, I was, I was just well, I was in Uganda about two weeks ago, and as I was leaving, Uganda and Kenya are like right next to other. And as I was leaving Uganda, mm -hmm. he was coming to Kenya, so I kind of I missed him by a few days. But yeah, he's been on my channel a lot, at least three times. So yeah, Mara, yeah, me and him are buddies. Definitely, but yes. talk about WhatsApp. We agree that in one year we we, we were gonna work together in one year, maybe less. I don't know, but uh, uh, yes, uh, Warma is very funny. I flirt with him playing, and he just he just won't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> he's everywhere. He's <coughs> been to the U.S. He's been to the Dominican Republic. Shout out to Moses Jenkins for uh, the super chat. People are trying to follow you, I think, on Instagram too right now. Um, so, so basically, yeah. So, uh, Mara, is, he's everywhere. I mean, in the USA, yeah. and um, and he's doing so many in good Dominican things. Dominican Republic. Yeah, he I know. New York. Uh, he wanted to go to Venezuela. I say, don't go because it's like a suicide. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Venezuelans in Colombia right now, right? Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of Venezuelans in Colombia. Uh, I'm, I'm half Venezuelan, by the way. Oh, so, you're half Venezuelan. Yeah, I'm half Venezuelan, but but my mother, she's very smart, so uh, she knew how to get all the money out of Venezuela before everything happened. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it used to yeah. be a very like kind of rich country, right? Yes, Venezuela it was like being in USA. Mm. Like it was a, like people don't even fit the stuff. They just threw them away. The gas, no one like when you go and fill out the gas, there was someone to fill the gas for you mm -hmm. and they don't even count the money because they were used to be so rich. Mm. Yeah, and now yeah. it's like Colombia has welcomed a lot of Venezuela. I mean, uh, uh, how is Colombia? I mean, now that so many Venezuelans are in Colombia, is it is Colombia still doing good, or how are they dealing with that? Uh, well, now Colombia has more over a million of Venezuelans, but the government of Colombia has helped now help help them a lot with health and so that they get settled but the situation of venezuelans in colombia is so harsh like they could be sitting in the street with babies just being born mm -hmm. and it's a very bad situation and that situation has get that a lot of good venezuelans uh, get a bad reputations because they were also meet with bad venezuelans mm -hmm. so there have been a lot of cases of stealing and and these cases of stealings and killings has led to uh, Colombians being a little bit xenophobic. Still, um, still Colombians, most of Colombians make the effort to not to to help the Venezuelans, which is something that is good in general. But now Colombians are starting to be more aware because of the crime, like talking something negative. Like there were a couple who gave job to Venezuelans in their home and these Venezuelans ended up killing them so that they could steal or they had or on the other way also Venezuelans have been abused by Colombians. For example, women who have steal their babies. Uh, to their mother saying that they will help them to take care of them, but they just take them away. So it's a situation that is difficult right now. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. But in general, Colombians try to help the Venezuelans. 
And in general, Venezuelans try to do their best to get out from the bad situation in in their country. Let me let me ask you this: How do you how do you uh, tell who is a Colombian and who is um, you know Colombians versus Venezuelan? How do you know the difference? The accent. The accent. Okay. Uh huh. The accent. Very different. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. I see. Like, yeah, like for example, Colombian, they speak more like this, and then we pronounce more the S, and it's this sense of accent, like singing, depending on the area, right? But Venezuelan is like, I don't know, what are you talking about, chamo? I'm, oh. really like, <laughs> I'm trying to imitate the accent, but in English, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> but I will tell you, Venezuelans tend to have better english than colombians uh they have better english yeah they, they the venezuelans yes they speak more english and they tend to have an english that has not an accent mm. uh -huh. but yes. colombians will tend to talk more like me <laughs> it's like a twist tongue for me Okay, okay, okay. Somebody wants you to say rich. They like you when you say the word rich. Can you say the word rich one more time? Uh, rich. To... Ah, okay. So that was for King Nick. He says, I like ah, you when she says rich. So... Rich, rich. <laughs> Papacito lindo. <laughs> so again, um, thank you for coming on. I mean, I think we got like at least, um, and guys, do me a favor and keep subscribing. She had like um, almost, so now we have 7515, so almost 100 subs um, coming over to her channel. Go over there and tell her that you, you you saw her from the O'Shea's channel. I really thank all of you for coming on today. Um, and, and, and I'll be going live on um, my other page because I have, a, I can take calls now. I got my setup there. And you know what? Next time, Anita, what we're going to do is if you come on, I'll have my uh, system set up where uh, they can call in and they can you can talk to them on the phone. All right, no problem. Just let me know when, how that's, that is new for me. Okay. So okay. let me know. So that'll be good. So so guys, uh, thanks again. And um, any, any last words you want to tell the people today? Any last word? Yes. <laughs> the first last word that I, uh, okay. I will say, no, take care, be kind. Come to my channel, get fun with me. <laughs> All right, go and give fun. Protection. I'm just kidding. <laughs> go, go give fun. <laughs> go give fun with uh, what? What's her channel? The the channel is in the. What's her channel? King Sequence, brother, 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 brother. You must be. You must just got here. The channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's. <laughs> She got too late for the party. No, yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's in the title, Columbia with Anita, brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. Columbia with Anita. And we put in the YouTube link right there. So you go ahead and subscribe to her right there. Uh, all you brothers. And again, thanks again. I'm a big fan of your channel. And I'm glad we were able to um, to come on today. And I'm pretty sure we'll get some uh, uh, more people to you. We'll, if, we, if you have time, we'll definitely do another show. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. With you, thanks to you. Thank right, you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.